Okay, I'm back to show you how to cut this uh, Sizzix Sidekick frame in half. So let's get started. I'm gonna cut on the other side of the blue. Okay, so I just went through the top here and <clears throat> I was able to get all the way through. I have the tape here. It's a plastic bag that protecting it from getting scratched. And I'm gonna start on the bottom now. I'm gonna start here on the other side of the blue. If you start at the corners, you can measure your distance and then you'll get a nice clean cut line. And once you make that groove, you just go ahead and keep going. Now I'm through this side. I'm gonna go ahead and go to this side. You can pull back on the hacksaw and it'll make a groove so you can get started. Okay, that's it. So when you take it out of the vise, these ends will come right off. And then these will come out of the tubes, just like so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep them in there to protect them a little bit. But this is how the machine comes apart. It's a cutting in half of the Sizzix Sidekick. It's getting ready for the 3D Origami Dream Bank Halo machine. I'll continue my uh, assembly inside. See you then. Okay, we just got back from outside and I actually cut three of these Sizzix bodies in half. Then I'm gonna pull them apart because I'm gonna assemble the final stages of the machine. You're gonna wanna put this washer in, put this disc on with the dimples facing this way. And they just push down tight. So it's nice and snug. Now I'm gonna try to push this clip on. If not, I'll use the uh, tool. I don't think I can get it. So I'm gonna use the tool real quick. Okay, let's put the clip on. Now we're ready to put this on the base. The last screw, you'll make sure they're just snug. Stand it up. I went ahead and sanded this with some sandpaper. It's about 220 grit. You 
want to put your bottom piece in. You can tell which way it goes because this goes down and the feed part goes towards the back. The polycarbonate drum goes at the bottom and the hard rubber roller goes towards the top. The next step The next step is to make the ejection roller and what I do is I use mylar and I cut these shapes out. So I went ahead and designed a cutting pattern and I just cut it out of the mylar. I measure this steel tubing against the actual Allen wrench that's a part of the set. So I use my Allen wrench as a measuring tool and it ends up being the proper size. So I'm going to go ahead and build this real quick. I just completed the assembly of the ejection brush right here and I'm going to go ahead and put it in the machine. Just fits in there like that and these pieces just lock in together. There's a big advancement of this piece. It was like the, the bottom and the top piece were the same. And instead of trying to use different tools to squeeze the rollers together, because there's a lot of pressure between these two points. And so you have to squeeze these together for the assembly. So we use parts of the machine and then we squeeze this together and this squeezing action squeezes the rollers together. So this is how this works. So I actually spread it apart until it's level. And I'll take the, part, the top part of the machine and then I'll actually squeeze it together. Okay, now that this is on, Pull your pieces out and screw it together. Okay, last one. These little pieces, they're decorative and I just push them in. It gives a finishing touch to the machine. They go like this. I like to get a little bit of sandpaper and dull these corners down just a little bit. Keep you from getting scratched. These, this is the top and this is the side piece and how you assemble it is it just goes together just like that. Fits together just like that. This is the gear, this is the handle. And what I did do is I took my time and I ended up using a nail about this big and I just uh, hammered it, hammered it through. I actually hammered it when it was still, when it was still in the machine, I just put the nail here and I just hammered it against here and it was fine. And then, then it came out and I, after that I drilled it with the two millimeter drill bit. This way your Allen wrench can fit inside. And this is the whole mechanism behind the handle. This is the strength of your handle. To put this on, you slip it over here first and the gear, the gear sticks out a little bit. You pick it up and push it in and everything will fall in place because the next step is to put your handle on this handle here.
the handle fits in just like this. Actually, you turn it over and then use your suction cup. And then look for, look for it to go in this area right here. Just like that, right in here. This locking collar replaces the other pin that we were using before and I'm gonna push it together and then tighten it. It's good to tighten it from the bottom because in the future you can access this nut from the top. You can still access You can still access it from inside here when this cover is on. That's the way it's designed. We're going to put the gears on next. When you assemble the machine at this point, you can use the handle to rotate this or you can just use the Allen wrench to help you adjust the gears and then you go ahead and pop this in. It'll help you out. One of the final steps is to put your gear cover on. Push this all the way back so you'll, you'll allow yourself some space. And then I like to hold this bar with my thumb Turn it once or twice till I can see the hole and then I'll put the Allen key in. Now here's a, a rubber stopper at the bottom and you can hold that with your finger and just turn your Allen wrench back and forth until it locks it in place. Give it a couple of turns. Also I like to test the machine. Give it a test. We're going to use the 132 cutting die. It's cutting paper, so that's the test. Okay, there you have it. Here's the next uh, 3D ODB Halo machine.